Hello and welcome back to the Honest Business Podcast. I hope you are really well. Today we are going to dive into an episode about how to capitalise when you have a wave of momentum in your business. How do you make sure that you utilise this period where things take off and you're kind of optimising things and things feel like, wow, all the work I've been putting in is actually paying off. Because many people think about that time and space and hope to get there and dream to get there and really think about, oh my goodness, one day it's going to be there. But often what happens is once that day does come, sometimes it can be really scary and unknown and a bit worrying. And you think, I don't know what to do. Like, how do we capitalize on it? How do we make the most of it? And this is a really great conversation because I have people who come to me and will say this, you know, I'm worrying that I'm not utilizing it enough, or I'm not actually sure of how we should navigate this time. And so I want to have that discussion with you today because again, it's something that will come for you. You know, if you're doing all the right things and it might take years and years, it might take months, it might take weeks, but you will hit a point where you think, wow, things are really taking off here. Momentum's really building. Everything that I've been working towards is is moving. What do I do next? And so that's what I'm going to talk you through this episode. So first thing we need to figure out is how do you know when this is happening? So how do you know if you're actually in this period of like things are really taken off and how do you, you've got like this wave of momentum? What that might look like, and it can take shape in a whole array of things, but one of it might be that you're selling out of services or product or things where there's a cap on how much you can sell. Another might be that you are seeing extreme growth in a certain service or product. So maybe, you know, it's a passive offer and maybe it's, you know, you can have an unlimited amount of sales, but maybe you're seeing some real out of, normality trends and scope kind of increases that can be a sign that things are really taken off it also can be social media growth it could be that your email list is really growing it could be that you're seeing a lot of people talking outside of your business about your business and you're hearing you know you're getting a lot of referrals it might be that you're sort of seeing this influx of inquiries and you're like I don't understand where this is coming from but you're finding out that people are are really your referral system is really working for you but there will tend to be this energy and I can only describe it as an energy because sometimes people will come and say, oh, I feel this energy of like things are gaining momentum, things are moving, things are starting to like really take off. And knowing what it is that it looks like is important in your business. So if you're not there yet, I'd really encourage you script and you write out and you visualize what does that look like for you? How does that take shape? What sort of things would you know? What signs are in place? And part of that is like sort of almost like a manifestation of like, let's manifest that. But also it's part of a thing of you being able to recognize and understand like, oh, okay, this is going to happen. Or I might feel like this. For some people, it's like they feel like they have no time. They feel like they're rushing off their feet. They feel like things are really busy. And whilst that can be a whole other set of reasons as to why that is, sometimes that is because the business has taken off and the momentum's building. It might be that you feel like you can't hire fast enough. So being able to understand what does that look like for you in your business is really important. From a practical perspective, if you are in a period where you've had this month where there's just things have just feel like they're really going well and they're blown up and you're like, wow, okay, this is like really working amazingly. Something I'd suggest to you is to look at the short term. So immediately, what can you do? Well, you need to be building your email list. So if you're having a period where you've got a lot of eyes on you as a business or things are really taken off, then you want to be building email lists and you want to be building kind of assets that you own, which as we all know, your email list is one of the only things that you actually own. So therefore making sure you've got a really good freebie, a really good option for people to want to opt in and to exchange their email. Also nurturing, that's really important. So nurturing the people that are coming onto your email list, whether that's new people, whether that's existing people, but making sure there's a clear journey of people are going to join the email list at this point and they're going to be nurtured via this method. Don't overcomplicate that. Don't make it more difficult than it needs to be. You can have multiple freebies if you want to do like a free opt-in. But again, think about how are you actively going to be able to promote effectively these different free offerings and therefore there's a real differentiator between having loads of freebies for the sake of it and being strategic in that. So I'd argue like three or three freebies really is more than enough if you're going to effectively market them consistently. Now, ideally, all of those freebies might have a funnel built on the back of them that's going to help to kind of convert to purchase. But as a bare, bare minimum, 
we need to make sure that you're growing your email list. Now, aside from that, the other thing I would be immediately looking at is what kind of short-term cash injection can we get for the business? Where can we increase cash flow at this time where interest for what we do is high, where there's a kind of interest for you as a person or whatever the business does? So that might be bringing out an offer that you've previously had before that you've kind of just bookmarked or has kind of got lost into the kind of ether of your business, or it might be creating something new. But this is one of the only times where I really recommend that you actually do kind of spark up something and you can create something that's off the cuff and you can create something that's different and you're like, hey, let's just do the short term offer. One of the reasons for doing that is if you've got a high volume of interest, you've got momentum building, you've got a lot of eyes on you, converting as many people as you can to something is much better than kind of just keeping a whole load of people in a social kind of social media presence that you've not yet actually converted. So I really recommend that you look at like short term, what is a kind of cash flow hit that you can have into the business that will positively impact the business. And the reason I say that is because I would recommend you then reinvest that money back into the business and back into growth, whether that's going to be expansion of team, whether that's going to be around quality of things that you can produce, whether that's going to be around new offerings and new product development, like it can the money can go to a whole host of different things but i wouldn't like don't look at the money as like oh great it's more money that's going to go in my pocket that can be the case but i'm suggesting that you look at it as like that chunk of money is then going to go into reinvestment of keeping this momentum going or growing the momentum even further one of the worst things you can do if you're in this phase of like really having a, a great time and things have really taken off is being silent i need you to keep going with that so really looking at how can I communicate with people? How can people get to know me? It's almost like you've started the business again. Like, let's just go through like who you are, what your story is, what your values are, like really getting clear on educating people who are coming into your world. Cause you've got to remember people are coming into your world every single day. So every single day you can be regurgitating similar information or sharing it in a different format to help people understand. This isn't a case for you to assume, and this is what happens for most people. Most people then just assume everybody knows everything about them. Everyone knows what they stand for. The reality of this is if you are on a momentum wheel at the minute and you're going forward, it's highly likely that you have got a whole set of people who don't know all of that. And so this is the time for you to kind of lean in and really go for it. Now, Whilst that is going on, I can't stress enough how how physically important it is, imperative is probably the better word, that you look long term. And this is what most people don't. The first bit we've discussed, you know, most people do. And that's kind of the general goings on of what happens. And most people will advise them to do that. However, what you must do at this point is also look at long term planning, long term sales plans, long term cash flow. And what does the new version of this business look like now that it has taken off and has reached probably some milestones that you had been trying to get to? If you do not do that, the business will stagnate. The business will get to a point where the momentum runs out and you feel like, oh no, and it either crashes back down or it sort of maintains itself at a pace, but it's not, it, it will not be able to keep just continuously going and going and going if you are not clear on what is the long-term plan. So you must, must, must take time to really establish what the long-term plan is. And I know this is really hard because when you're in the middle of it, you don't want to do it. Like in the middle of it, you're like, I've got all these things going on and I've got to keep going. And you've been invited to events and you're invited to speak on this thing and do this thing. And like, there's so many external things going on that you're like, that are exciting and you want to jump at. I'd really suggest that this is the time that you've got to protect your time even more than usual. So you've really got to capitalize and like hold space for yourself and know what is best for you now and future you. You're sort of looking ahead. You're not looking at like, oh, this is amazing. This is great. Like, yes, you need to enjoy it. And yes, you need to take it in. But you also have got to keep a grasp on what is the longer term impact of this? What do I want the longer term impact to be? Because the reality of it is, is if you're in this like phase of it taken off and feeling really good, you want to keep that and you can keep that, but it requires you to be intentional and strategic and have a real clear understanding about what you are wanting to, to happen. So think about longer term, what is going to benefit the business? And what I mean by that is typically it's higher ticket stuff. So 
Well, you're in a period of momentum, you're going to have a short term effort, you're going to have cash injections, typically they might be of a lower price point to try and gather as many people in and, and build a more volume based model of getting as many people as possible who are in the beginning stages of your funnel. But then you also, and I can't stress this enough, try and build in some high ticket revenue, some high ticket sales that will build your monthly recurring revenue. So where can you either push your high ticket offer that you've already got, which hopefully you've got some kind of higher ticket offering, or are you going to have to create one? But having some kind of high ticket thing in there is super important. It makes total sense for the growth of the business normally, given the kind of momentum that you're building. Because as soon as you've got more people to play with, there's much more, it's much easier to kind of set the different price points and for the price points to make sense. So having a high ticket offer and having something that is high touch to you, having something that's exclusive to you, having something that is a huge transformation or it's a real big touch point, but creating something that is going to build you reoccurring revenue, ideally for a whole year. So what I mean by that for anyone listening to Ensure is they're going to buy something, they're going to sign a contract with something whilst the momentum's high, whilst all the things are going on, that either they're paying in a chunk of money now that is for a service that's going to be delivered over a 12 month period, or they're going to pay in monthly installments or quarterly installments where there's going to be regular revenue that they're contractually obliged to deliver to you at certain points. And that is crucially important for helping to maintain this momentum, because if you can get that chunk of money secured and that chunk of money could literally be hundreds, it could be thousands, it could be millions, like depending on the size of your business is going to mean different things. That chunk of money allows for the business to then do a whole other set of stuff, which is where you would look at scaling strategy and where you would look at growth strategy, depending on how big you want to take the business and how far you want to run with it. But building some kind of high ticket offer that then helps you to have monthly reoccurring revenue is a really important one. Because what the key difference here is, yes, you can sell high ticket stuff, which might be a one hit. So, for example, if you're a consultant, it might be that you sell a £5,000 or £10,000 or £20,000 strategy day. But the only kind of thing with that is is it's a one and done thing, which I'm not saying don't do and I'm not saying that that isn't going to work. You can totally sell that. But I'm suggesting you look at what is a high ticket offering that will just allow for less of a need for you to deliver right there, right now, and more of a prolonged period that is more sustainable to you. Because what happens sometimes is that when this stuff kicks off, people might start selling high ticket, but they're selling a kind of short term offering. They then do, let's just say that the strategy day, for example, they then do 10 of those in the space of a month or two months, burn themselves out completely, crash and burn, momentum gets completely lost. They have to take two months out of the business. They end up in such a turmoil with themselves. And that's a whole other thing we have to navigate from that. So in terms of a sustainability perspective, I highly, highly suggest you look at how can we sell a high ticket offer, but how can we do it either on a longer term basis, on an ongoing contract with a minimum contract length? Like, how do we build that into the business? Because that's what's going to make your business sustainable. And it's also what's going to make you keep the business going in terms of creating transformation for people that people then want to continue talking about, which will aid the business further. And that is something that is really, really important. Now, what do you do marketing wise? This is a question that comes up in terms of, right, we've got this whole wave going on. Everything's going really well. The momentum is building. What can we do from a marketing perspective? And there's two ways of looking at this. The first one I've kind of mentioned in the fact of do not stop doing all your marketing. Like you have to keep going with your marketing. Sometimes people will come to me and say, well, we're fully booked out or we haven't got anything to sell people because, you know, the momentum's took off and now things are going really well, but you've got all these eyes on you or potential eyes that come to look at you, but you haven't got anything to sell. That does not matter. I still need you to pick out content. You still need to market your business. You either need a wait list in operation of how the services is going to run or you need to and or really you need a product like I would argue in this day and age there is no reason for a business not to be able to sell anything at any point whether that's you're selling something for seven pounds or you're going to sell something for seventy thousand pounds there should be something that people can buy at all times even if your like main service capacity is full so there's a whole piece there where you've got to look at right what are we marketing the other thing to look at is how are you building brand awareness 
brand awareness, if you're at this point of momentum taking off, it's probably, you know, it's doing something, it's working, but this is a great opportunity to extend that. It's also about looking at, okay, we talked about building the email list, your marketing kind of whole marketing could be around, how do we build this email list even further? So even if you're not directing people to a point of sale, it's really important that you figure out like, what are you making the thing? If you've got a podcast, for example, that can be the focus part focus of, of your marketing activities to promote the podcast and to get people glued in and get people there and listening. So you've really got to, I would never say like, there's rarely a point where it's going to make sense for someone to stop marketing or not do their marketing. It's about understanding how does their strategy change? Does it change? Does it need to? And there's also this difficulty that people come across of where do you change something even though it's working? And this is the thing that you've got to be really careful of because my biggest point in this episode is don't stop doing what is working. Like whatever has gotten you to the point of the momentum kicking off and happening, that needs to be continued. So... And I think this is where often the momentum drops because people trail off or they lose it or they stop or they have all sorts of different reasons as to why. And I'm not saying you can't stop and if you do, it makes you a bad business owner. Like life gets in the way, you know, things happen. But ideally, you need to continue doing whatever is working. Yes, you can tweak it. Yes, you can improve it. Yes, you can change it slightly. But really be careful to not sort of almost shoot yourself in the foot by doing all these things and then realizing actually we should have kept going with the thing that got us there in the first place. The other thing to kind of note on that is there's a difference between stopping doing what's working and tweaking something because it's unsustainable. If what you're doing is unsustainable, it is okay for you to tweak it. It's okay for you to find a way to make it more sustainable, but you need to be intentional about how that works. The other thing I want to mention is that you need to enjoy this. <laughs> like, Make sure you take time to enjoy this moment because, you know, business is a living, breathing thing. At some point, it will have its issues. It'll have its challenges. It'll have its difficulties. So really enjoy the season you're in. Take it all in. Think about it. Think about what are you learning, thinking about what's good, thinking about what's not so good. But really enjoy in this period of, wow, I have made something happen and this is how it's running take note of the learnings and take note of the reflections take note of what doesn't feel good and what is draining you what's causing you a lot of issues what isn't because the reality of it is is when you're in this situation things are not like always great they're not going to be like there's no problems often people will come to me and say oh my goodness this has happened and now I feel like I've got more problems than I ever have done and that's just you know business to some degree it the bigger you get the bigger the kind of risk gets the bigger the potential of things going wrong happens you know somewhat and that's okay. It's not about us trying to create a business where there's never an issue or there's never a problem. But I think really optimizing where you're at and what you've got is important. At this point as well, you must get support, in my opinion. Like, try your best to get some solid support for you. So, if you're the leader, if you're the CEO, if you're the director, you're the one that's leading the team, you're kind of leading a vision, you're trying to figure out the vision, maybe the vision feels a bit blurred after this has all happened, make sure you invest in quality help and support. And I mean that from a strategic perspective, like a coach, a mentor, a consultant, an advisor, like make sure you've got a team of people supporting you and around you that is really conducive to making sure that you can continue this growth and this kind of boom in the business. Because it's very easy for you to kind of get derailed and get sidetracked and for things to kind of move in various directions. And you need people there around you saying, hang on a minute, like, what is the next step? What are we working towards? What's the next piece of this? Um, you don't have to do that all alone. I think it's, I suppose you kind of, if you've managed to get to that point on your own, it can sometimes feel like, well, why do I want to bring someone in? Because like, I've managed to get this far, I'll get wherever I need to go again. But I think just be really, really careful that you don't, shoehorn yourself into an area where you think I've got to do this on my own and I've got to make sure that I am invincible because you don't have to be you really really don't I hope you enjoy this period that you're in and I hope you really thrive in it and and like utilize it and talk about it that's the other thing like it's really important many of you will have a personal brand or you have some kind of connection point where you're talking to a community of people tell them about it People want to get on board with that. They want to hear a really raw perspective. And 
as much as people like to hear about when things go wrong, they do, you know, enjoy to hear when things are going right, but share with them the kind of difficulties that you are facing, even though X, Y, and Z thing is happening. I hope you take this episode and do something good with it. And I will be back next week with another another conundrum, another question for us to, to look at. But this was all about how to capitalise on a wave of when things take off and kind of managing momentum and optimising it. Please leave me a review. Leave us a review. I don't think there's many reviews. <laughs> Please leave us a review. Helps more people find us. That's really important because more of our business owners and leaders need to access this podcast um, and the reviews really help to do that. So I really appreciate if you've already left a review, but if you haven't, please, please click the five stars or however many stars you want to give us and leave us a quick review. Take care and I will speak to you next week. Bye.